Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage. Today's guest is the great James Burton. So, I hate to bring up something like this, but you know, you were in the band when when Elvis passed. What happened? What was that like for you? Well, what was the yeah, what was it like for the band? Uh, August sixteenth, and uh, I was in. Uh, I lived in Toluca Lake in Burbank, California, and. Uh, um, I had I went to Burbank to get on our we had a private plane and we flew to Las Vegas to pick up our conductor Joe Gershow and singers and musicians and so anyway when we left Las Vegas that morning we we're flying out to our first show was in Portland Maine and uh, man I don't know we were in the air maybe 15 20 30 minutes and um, you know you can get quite a ways down the, down the road, uh, down the air uh, in a plane, you know. So they called from Vegas and said, return to Vegas, the pilot, but they didn't tell him why. So anyway, um, the pilot said, well, I have to stop and refuel because I can't just turn around and go back. So we stopped in Pueblo, Colorado to refuel. And so I got out and I walked outside the plane and, um, and the trombone player, Marty Harrell, Marty came up to me and said, James, I'm gonna go call Vegas and see if I can get a, you know, find out something. I said, oh, okay. So my wife was in Louisiana. I, I called, uh, I was gonna go call her and I didn't make it to the phone. Marty was on his way back. And he came up to me and he had tears in his eyes and he put his arms around me and said, Elvis died. I couldn't believe it. Man. It was like shock, you know. My, it was, I couldn't believe it. I said, "Is this a joke?" He said, "No, for real." And because the the thing that came to mind was Vernon. His dad had been sick with the heart problems, and I thought it maybe something happened to Vernon, but it was th this particular time. It was Elvis. I mean, it was a sad flight back to uh, Vegas. We get back to Vegas, and I had a home in Vegas, and I was going to get off and stay there, um, knowing my wife was in Louisiana. I said, no, no, I'm going to go back to my home in Toluca Lake and Burbank. And uh, Jimmy Wakely, a good friend of mine, the cowboy, Jimmy, picked me up at the airport, and it was raining. It was really a sad day. And uh, he took me to my house and he said, James, I want you to come spend the night with, with me and uh, Inez, his wife. I said, man, I don't know. I, I really need to get on the phone. I want to see if I can get a flight to Memphis. I got on the phone. Joe, I called every airline I could think of and they were completely booked up. I talked to a girl with American Airlines and uh, she knew me she she because she was a big fan of Elvis she said James I, I got 500 people on waiting list but give me an hour or two and let me see what I can do so she called me back later and she said you got 11 o'clock flight tomorrow morning and don't be late and I went and got on that plane flew to Memphis and uh it, it was a it was a very sad thing, you know. I walked in the house, and um, I called my wife, and I said, meet me in, in uh, Memphis. And so she did no, later. I picked her up later at the airport. And uh, Priscilla wanted to take me in, uh, in that room where they had Elvis in the casket. And I, um, I didn't want to do it. I said, I'm going to wait till my wife gets here. And Ann Margaret was there. Ann was in the room with the Elvis, and she would go in for maybe three or four hours, and then come out and, and go back in. That that long, and and in there with it, but oh, way. Yeah, James Brown, man, he was in there for hours. He he he, I don't know. I think they had to pull him out. He didn't want to leave. And uh, Ann Margaret was in there a long time, and yeah, it was just a. Uh, God, can you, all the people driving down the funeral concession, going to the graveyard, streets were just lined up. With, you, you 
thousands and thousands of people. Just amazing. It was sad. You know, my wife and I went, we were in like the third, third, I believe, third or fourth uh, white limo following the, you know, the hearse to the, you know, and J.D. Sumner and the stamps, they were all there. And it, it was just, it was a sad day.